Hello. So, thank you for watching my channel. This is a new thing. <laughs> I'm like, it's always live is when I, when I'm like cut out and don't know what to say. But today I'm going to talk about seven things to do when you first move into a house. Um, I haven't done this already, but I, after about eight years of being in real estate, there's quite a few things I picked up and just, you know, been, uh, been seeing things and in helping people. And after they ask me a million questions, uh, I've come together with a list of seven things that would really help you when you move into a house. But before you go anywhere, please wait to the end of the broadcast about, uh, I have a special gift I'm going to be giving away. Uh, so at the end of the broadcast, I definitely want you to pay attention so you can learn how you could win something valuable. And I'll tell you what that is at the end. So let's start off. When you first move into a, a place, um, what are some things you, you want to do? Well, first, I would say this is what you just do before you move in is definitely set up your water, your, your utilities, your water, your energy bill, your trash. Uh, you set up. You know, find out who your Wi-Fi companies are and your cable. Uh, find out, you know, get all that information ahead of time. I know if there's, if you move into a house where the power or the water is not active, it could cause uh, like a three-day delay depending on where you're at. Uh, just or, or like, you know, until you get that fully active. So you definitely want to, step number one is set up. Uh, your utilities prior to moving in but after you move in this is a huge important thing uh, is security you know go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy new locks and put these you know put locks all on your doors um, just keep in mind you don't know really who the old owners are and you really don't know how many people have the keys to your house um, you know and you know, I know when we first moved into a house I have no idea who was here, but we had someone within the first week, someone knocking on our door at like 10 o'clock at night and thinking they were going to meet their friend. And so that was kind of weird, you know. Uh, so put in new doors. And then here are some other things, uh, new door uh, door locks. Uh, get one of those ring doorbells or something that has, you know, that catches a camera that shows, you know, when there's the motion detection, shows who's going to be there. You have ring, you have blink. I know Nest. There's quite a few different companies out there that has it. It's a small investment, but it's a huge safety, you know, feature that helps protect anything to help protect your home is definitely worth having. Um, and then also you can set up new cameras. Like I don't know if the cameras that you that that's present on the property could be, you know, other people may have access to it still. So setting up new cameras and new system will definitely be a good feature. Oh, another thing is adding new lights. You know, you may be in an area where it's really dark, you know, and putting some new lights is a safety feature, especially at night for either wildlife. You know, when you're out there, it could be, you know, bear, coyotes, wolves, or wherever you're at, or, you know, just different people wandering around where you're, in, you know, on the street. So having extra lights definitely keeps you safe. And um, once you move in, a good thing to have is to see if you're able to set up a fence because, um, you know, if you're having a garden or if you're looking to, uh, you know, have stuff in your backyard, you kind of want to have a perimeter and you don't want people just snooping in your backyard or snooping around your, your property, taking things or just walking around for no reason. You want to safeguard your place. So security is a huge part of it. Next is remodeling. You know, when you first move into a house, if it's possible where you can, you know, I bring everything in, if you could do all your painting, your flooring, the removing the popcorn, you know, ceilings, any of your repairs, if you could do that before you move in, it makes it so much easier. Because if you have, if you're doing a flooring and you have to kind of like move things from one place to another, it just takes so much time. So if you have the ability to stay where you're at just a little bit longer, and to take care of all your painting, your flooring, um, you know, it makes whoever your handyman or whoever you have doing the repairs, it makes it so much easier for them. And it just makes it easier for you because you don't have to just worry about covering all of your items with plastic so paint doesn't go on it or dust doesn't go on there. Uh, it makes it so much easier. And also, right when you move in, it's really good to have a um, 
a maintenance checklist, like things, you know, like, of course, changing the AC filter once a month and having a checklist of every little maintenance thing that you should check monthly. Like, you know, the AC, you want to yearly get it, you know, checked out uh, so that way it'll last longer. So you want to definitely have, uh, um, it's a perfect time to create a maintenance checklist so that way you can keep it, you know, take a look at it every time you're <laughs> you're in your house. And then once you move in, a lot of people kind of forget to do this. They kind of do it like a few weeks later is let everyone know of your new address. You know, your families, your friends, let them know you moved into a new place. Sometimes they may want to send you a, you know, a home welcoming gift or other times they may send you like a birthday card or a wedding invite. And since they don't know you moved into a new place, they send it to your other, you know, your old address and that could cause some issues. Uh, also update all of your bills, any bills or any monthly payments you have. If you were getting it mail instead of like, it's like all uh, paperless, if you got anything in paper, you want to let them know you are moving into a new address. And also um, when you move in, usually the post office will send you a paper to fill out, but just best go to the post office, let them know your new address and fill up, uh, uh, see if it, you can pick up the key there. Cause usually when you move into some place, especially if it's a new home community, sometimes you don't have a mailbox. They have like a community mailbox and you would go, you know, you would have to have a key. So you would have to pick that up at the post office. And there's also a good time to change the address on your license. Uh, now, speaking of that, um, your insurance, you know, if you're moving to the country or to a rural area, you definitely want to let your insurance know that you changed the address because we, when we moved from Orlando to Lake Wells, our insurance dropped almost in half. And I didn't tell the insurance people until like a few months later. I didn't think about it. And, you know, that's why we have this. But, and after I did that, I was like, man, I could have saved an extra $100 a month just by letting them know I moved into a smaller city. So let them know. Also, it's a good time now that you moved into a new home, you know, read and understand what your coverage, you know, in case there's a, you know, in Florida, in case there's a hurricane, uh, in case there's a fire or, or a sinkhole or whatever the situation is in your house, you want to make sure that your insurance cover covers it. You know, I was talking to one of my neighbors and he has an older house and he was telling me that uh, fire is, you, you know, the, their insurance won't cover if there's a fire. And I'm like, you have to get a new insurance company. You know, God forbid a lightning were to happen or a wire issue were to happen, you know, and his house catches on fire, everything goes with it. And he's like, now you're homeless, you have nothing. And your property won't sell. It, it's just, it, it, you know, it's just a chaos. So I'm like, you don't want to, you don't want to be in that situation. You definitely want to find something that's going to cover all, you know, everything. Um, so in uh, same with home warranties, you know, I know sometimes sellers can't afford to re make repairs, but like if you have a, a, a old AC system or um, or old appliances, sometimes it's good to have a home warranty. And this is where I'm learning from my mistakes because I chose not to purchase a home warranty. And within the first year, my fridge, <laughs> my fridge broke down. And I'm telling you, when you have a bad fridge, it is, it's a chaos. It's a, it's a horrible moment. Um, and we didn't find out it was bad until we got food poisoned. Trust me, that's not the time you want to find out. So, but if we would have had, you know, if we would have had that coverage, they would have bought us a brand new fridge, which would have been awesome. Um, you know, they would either fix it or try to get us a brand new fridge, which would have been perfect. Um, so getting a home war home owner's warranty really helps, you know, especially if it's in your first year or see if they, ha you could, you know, do it up to three years, find out which home warranty you could afford and it'll cover different appliances. I mean, imagine we, when we bought our house, we bought a brand new AC system. So that was taken care of, but there's some houses that the AC has been there in about 10, 15 years, and usually they last 15 years, and who knows if the previous owners have been taking care of the AC for 15 years. So um, if you had a home warranty, homeowner's warranty and the AC system were to break, and if they can't fix it, and it's only $40 for them to go out and fix it, 
But if they can't fix it, then they give you a whole brand new system, which will save you like $15,000, which is pretty awesome. Also, a builder's warranty. You know, when you if you purchase a new home construction, um, check and see what, what's covered. And also, I highly recommend within one year, after, within like 11, 10, 11 months, once you head towards the end, send out a uh, uh, ask for a home inspection to go out there and see if they could find any issue with the home and let the home, you know, the builders know about that. So uh, another one is pest control. When you move into a house and there's nothing in there, um, you know, check and see if the house needs to be tented. You know, if you're purchasing an old house and you've seen some bugs, you know, it's a perfect time to tent your house because there's nothing in there. Um, another thing is to do a termite protection. You know, you may buy a house that's a block house. But the inside the walls, you know, are not going to be blocked. They're going to be wood frame. And then also the roof is not going to be blocked. It's also going to be wood frame. So just because you bought a house that's blocked, that doesn't mean that the house may not have termites. So you definitely want to get termite protection for your house. And it's a perfect time for any, like, you know, uh, to spray for bugs. You know, if there's roaches, you know, you're, we're in Florida it's like nearly impossible to get rid of roaches. But if you want to spray the roaches inside and take care of ants and bugs and roaches and spiders, it's the perfect time before you have your kids inside the house, before you put food in your house. And, and before you put anything else in your house, it's good to have all of these things done before you move in. Now, one of the last things a lot of people may not think of is your home safety, your smoke detectors. Um, so you know, go in there, regardless of what it is, go and put new batteries in your smoke detector, your carbon uh, monoxide detector, and get a new fire extinguisher. You know, these few little things could save your life big time. Um, and after you move in, after you've done all these things, definitely wipe down your house clean, and then you can fully unpack. But these are, these are like super important things I've learned, some by the hard way, some by learning from others. But these are great tips on what to do when you first move into the house. Remember, set up your, your utilities, get your security under control, do all your remodeling, change your address, check your insurance, do your pest control, and work on your home safety items. Thank you for watching. And now to talk about my giveaway, I'm going to give, uh, uh, if you want to get a chance to or a Philips light control. And the cool thing about the Philips light control is you could, uh, you know, change dim to light, set it on a timer, um, and you do all that through your phone, and which is really awesome. So we're giving away the, the, the each value about like $100. So if you like to get a chance to enter into one of these item gifts, please like. This, uh, like the post, subscribe, and leave a comment to get a higher chance to win one of these, uh, one of these uh, gift items. So if you can, thank you for watching, and you have a wonderful day.